Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. That's Emery Hunt, the Zara to Playbook, and I'm Tyler Merkovich, bringing you our 2010 season preview for the Minnesota Vikings, of course, coming off a 12-4 year in overtime, away from a Super Bowl berth. Brett Favre, great season last year. Oh, the, their coaching staff's amazing. Brad Childress, he has Daryl Bevel as offense coordinator. Leslie Frazier, when he can get a job as D coordinator. But Brett Favre will most likely be back. And running back, they lose Chester Taylor. So that's not going to be a compliment to Adrian Peterson anymore. Instead, they bring in Stanford rookie Toby Gerhardt. I think the, uh, the script has flipped a little bit. I think Adrian Peterson will be more of that Chester Taylor fit running outside and not running up the middle anymore. That'll be Gerhardt's job. So talk about Brett Favre, Adrian Peterson, Toby Gerhardt. Well, don't get it twisted. Gerhardt is coming in the back of Peterson. Peterson is going to still be Peterson in between the tackles. Outside, Peterson just has to hold on to the football. That was his homework assignment since the season ended. He better hold on to the football this year to help the Vikings offense out a lot. But Gerhardt is going to be very solid. And don't sleep on Albert Young. I liked Albert Young a lot out of Iowa while he was in college, and I like him now in the league. So I think Albert Young, Gerhardt, and with Peterson back there, that's a – Outstanding running back tandem. Gearhart is going to surprise a lot of people this year. And Favre is back. Favre only had seven interceptions last year. That's impressive. So whatever happens with Favre coming back, I'm, they're going to be fine at quarterback. But I really do like Tavares Jackson. I think when Favre decides to hang it up, Tavares Jackson is going to do fine for the Vikings. And offensive line, not uh, played okay last year. Uh, they lost Matt Burke, of course. John Sullivan, their center. He needs to step up a little bit. Steve Hutchinson still one of their best. Uh, best guards in the league at left guard, Brian McKinney, question marks at left tackle, but he's still solid. Anthony Herrera, right guard, Phil Lodeholt at right tackle. They lose one of their backups, Artis Hicks. Lodeholt had a great rookie season coming out of Oklahoma last year. Well, I really like their offensive line. I like the fact Jim, the center John Sullivan, the guy that I was really impressed with. And I'm also looking to see how Anthony Herrera improves this year at guard. I'm looking to see how can he get better. And you look, you mentioned Lodeholt as well as McKinney. Those guys are skyscrapers. You know, I would love to run behind that offensive line, but Sullivan is going to be, was a great pickup, and Herrera's improvement is going to be key to that offensive line. The wide receivers, you know, they got the weapons. Sidney Rice, what a year he had. Last year, they helped Favre lead the eighth, eighth best passing attack in the league. Of course, Percy Harvin injured with those migraine problems. That was a problem, but he was still very productive. Bernard Berrien, always injured, off injured last year, but he showed up in the playoffs, especially against the Saints. He could really run the deep ball. And Greg Lewis, a salty veteran. Remember that catch against the 49ers? He's also there. And Vasante Shanko really came into his own. Favre loves over the middle, passing to his tight end in Shanko. So talk about their wide receiver units, which is very comparable to Green Bay. Well, they're dependable and they're explosive. Barron is going to be back healthy, so watch how much explosive they are at the wide receiver spot. Also keep an eye on rookie Joe Webb, quarterback slash wide receiver out of UAB, a guy that's going to come in and provide some. He's 6'3", mm -hmm. 220, so another guy, another big body guy. Shanko improved a lot last year. I was a big Shanko detractor, but this guy showed me something last season, improved tremendously year over year. So he's going to be another talented tight end for his offense. And big shout out to Jim Klein Saucer. I really like him as a player. They drafted him in the second round out of North Dakota, but I think he's a real solid player. One of the best blocking tight ends in the league. And Klein Saucer is a really good player. I really Full like him. Full back tight end, great H back. Mm -hmm. He does all the dirty work. But look out for Joe Webb to play quarterback a little bit. Yeah. Great mm -hmm. athlete. All these guys who play quarterback in a college and then they turn to wide receiver, they're very good athletes. Right. But look for him. He might play quarterback and he might push Tavares Jackson, no. your boy, in the future. Defensive side of the ball, Leslie Frazier leads a great unit. Six total defense, second best rush defense, 19th in the passing attack. That was a, little, a problem a little. And it's big question marks this year. We'll get to that later. But let's talk about the D-line. Pat Williams and Kevin Williams, of course, two of the best, and they compliment Jared Allen greatly. Ray Edwards, also a great compliment over there. That's an unbelievable D-line, probably the best unit in the NFL. Everson Griffin, they draft. This guy's supposed to be a top 20 pick. He turns, falls way down. He'll back up Ray Edwards just in case he leaves in the future. Griffin really has some promise also to talk about their D-line. Yeah, I like their D-line. They have a lot of depth on their defensive line too. Brian Robeson is another guy that brings a lot of depth. And also Jimmy Kennedy, another guy that provides depth on their defensive line. Griffin, if he can come to play week in, week out, something he didn't do at USC, this is a tremendous, this is the biggest steal in a draft. The Vikings have Griffin on that defensive line. But Allen Edwards, 
the two Williams boys. Williams is going to retire probably after the season. This is last year of his contract, so let's get what we can out these guys. I think they have the best D line arguably in the NFC. Well, they had a huge key injury last year that really killed them. That's EJ Henderson. They're all do all every all everything middle linebacker. And uh, Jasper Brinkley really needs to step up as a rookie, but Ben Lieber stepped up on one of the outsides along with Chad Greenway, one of the best cover linebackers in the league. He's about to be a pro bowler. And their secondary, really question marks coming in because Antoine Winfield's getting a little old. They picked on him a little last year. That's why they drafted Chris Cook out of Virginia early second round. They pick up Lito Shepard because Cedric Griffin, too bad if it wasn't for that overtime game, he wouldn't have been injured, torn ACL. He might not be 100% when the season starts. And their safeties really had trouble last year. Tyrell Johnson, the young, the young strong safety, and free safety, Madhu Williams, who they picked up a couple years ago from the Bengals. So that back seven, a lot of question marks. Is Henderson healthy? Is Griffin healthy coming off all these injuries? And they weren't too good last year. And because those front four, they help them out. They get to the quarterback, they sack the quarterback. So they were uh, number one in sacks last year with 48. So talk about the back seven. Well, I like the linebackers. Jasper Brinkley, Brinkley can hit. He's one of those run, run first linebackers. He just has to improve on his coverage. So, and I'll, Chad Greenway is my favorite linebacker in the NFL. I love the way he plays the game. He's He's aggressive in run support. He can rush the passer. He can drop back in coverage. He also catches interceptions. So the linebackers, I think, are fine. Brinkley has to improve on the pass. So if Henderson comes back, you think Brinkley's going to start on the outside? Well, or who's going to going to push Henderson? What do you think? Did you see Henderson's leg injury? That shouldn't <laughs> be a question. So, I mean, I think Brinkley's going to be fine. He just has to improve in, in pass coverage. And you look at E.J. Henderson's brother as well, too. Another guy that can play a little bit. He may be the odd man out, though. Secondary, Chris Cook may have to start, but that's why they brought in Lito Shepard. But Chris Cook is better suited for that cover, too. Solid number two. Winfield should be healthy this year. Last year, he was bothered by the foot injury or the ankle injury. That's why teams picked on him. But keep an eye. I really, first of all, I really like Asher Allen, another guy out of Georgia that can play really well in that secondary. He's going to prove to be huge for the Vikings. Also, keep an eye on Jamarcus Sanford at safety. You don't know him. Get to know him. This guy is going to be a tremendous playmaker for the Vikings. If they, if when. Griffin comes back from that injury, they're going to be solid in that back half of that secondary. Of course, Marcus Sanford from a small college, but mm -hmm. a lot of hype in him at the free safety position. Special teams, Brian Murphy, great special teams, Chris Chloe at punter, Ryan Lola, always reliable kicker, and Percy Harvin helped them out in the kick return game. They were tied for 11th in punt return and kick returns. Darius Reyna, also a good uh, returner. So special teams is okay. Special teams is solid. Their coverage units has to do better. That's what killed them in the, in the playoffs against the Saints. They give up a lot of big plays in the special teams aspect. But with Harvin back there, returning the football, they're fine. Also back to the secondary, keep an eye on Benny Sapp, a solid, solid nickel corner. For more, visit footballgameplan.com slash NFL or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan. You want to start over? No, what, what happened? I mean, I know. I, I don't know. I just totally forgot. Whoa, what were we supposed to do? We were supposed to wrap it up. I know, like, I know, we were doing that the whole time. I just blacked out. All right, so let's do it. Yeah. All right, I'm out to figure out how to edit like. Go ahead. I mean. Ah, my back. All right. You got like a minute. All right. Um, what am I gonna say here? Okay. Big questions in the secondary. But you like Chris Cook, Antoine Winfield is back, he's a little older, he can cover. Defensive line always there and offense is there. Minnesota will compete with Green Bay. What do you think? Yeah, Green Minnesota, Bay or Minnesota? Minnesota is going to make a deep run in the playoffs. So it's tough to say, it's going to be a dogfight in the division, but Minnesota has a look again of a champion. Brett Favre, come back sooner. For more, visit footballgameplan.com slash NFL or check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan.